No. No. 260 horsepower. No. It has a little 1.8 no. litre four cylinder engine no. producing around 250 Two. horsepower. No. This is the rear braking traction when all the horsepower. power falls yeah. horsepower. horsepower. No. Right. That's it. I'm fed up of hot hatches with a million horsepower. I'm fed up of ordinary family cars with more horsepower than they need. I'm fed up of turbocharging. I'm fed up of hot hatches having engines bigger than supercars. I'm fed up of headline figures. I'm fed up of Nürburgring lap times. I'm fed up of heavy cars. Why can't we just get back to basics? What's wrong with lightweight hot hatches? What's wrong with simple to drive, fun little cars? I need to find one of those and drive it. Well, how about this one? The Hyundai i20N makes do with just 200 horsepower. It manages to be just front-wheel drive. It lives without a complex DSG or a hard-to-understand torque vectoring system. And it's also only £24,500. Your average family hatchback these days has 150, 200 horsepower if it's an EV400. So isn't there a chance that this is going to feel a little bit undercooked? Well, I have some news for you, and it's good. This is just one of those cars that well, it just can't help itself. For a start, just look at it. It's, it's got a rear wing. It absolutely does not need a rear wing. It's tiny, it's got 200 horsepower. It only does 142 miles an hour, and that's with the engine screaming to get out of the bonnet. It'll only do 0 0.62 in 6.7 seconds, but it's got a little rear wing. And then there's the face, which is really angry, or the back, which has a little diffuser, which is just as pointless as the wing, or the oval exhaust that cracks and pops despite being connected to a 1.6. Thankfully, the i20N knows, well, it knows exactly what it was made for, and that is stupidly silly fun. That 1.6 litre engine, yeah, 200 horsepower, it probably doesn't seem like a lot these days, and it does not pick up quite as well as, say, the Fiesta ST or its big brother, the i30N, but it doesn't really matter. This car isn't about going incredibly fast. This thing weighs 1,100 kilograms, which is about the same as an Alpine A110. In reality, you could power this car by hamster and it wouldn't make a difference. Well, you shouldn't do that, because it would be mean, but you get what I'm saying. The purpose of the i20N is not to be ridiculously fast in a straight line or to get from A to B faster than anything else. It is to be an absolute riot of sensations and fun almost everywhere that you go. You can uh, properly fling this thing into corners and then just wait lean on that outside tyre, wait for a second as it slides and then it will grip up and it will grip up beautifully strongly but that perfect initial slide allows you just that little second of exhilaration as you're not sure quite what it's going to do and then it doesn't have a massive amount of power but it's got enough that you can adjust it with a lift from the throttle. The steering is delightful, it's not the heaviest you've ever felt and it's not as sharp as uh, the Fiesta ST or the i30M but it's more than good enough to combine with the chassis on this car which is just totally brilliant. And then there's the gearbox, which, oh, it's just excellent. It's not got a mechanical tricky throw like, say, a Porsche or even like the MX-5, and it's not got a wobbly sort of one that takes a bit of work like some of the smaller BMWs do. It's quite simple. There's no real force needed, but it's such a short and sharp throw that every time you change gear, it just feels so satisfying to do. And then that matches with the pop and bangs map in this car, which is stupid. It's really dumb. But every time you shift gear around 4,000 RPM or if you come off the throttle, it just sends a thousand explosions out of the back, which are not necessary, but will put a smile on your face. And it pipes sound 
into the cabin, but it's so not necessary, it's almost funny, because you could just listen to what comes out of the exhaust. I could probably listen to that as I go to sleep at night and be perfectly happy. It's got rev matching as well, and it's got good rev matching, not rev matching like, say, the GR Yaris, where it rev matches about three-fifths of a second after you really need it. This is rev matching that will actually elevate what you do, and it's on a big red button as if you're going to set off some kind of nuclear warhead every time you turn it on, which is just stupid. But again, you don't need it. The pedal positioning on this car is so good, you really do not need rev matching. Heel and toe, I'm not very good at it, if I'm honest. Heel and toe is not my forte, but I can do it well in this car. And it will just elevate everything you do. In each gear change, you will feel like an absolute hero. It's not all great news, mind. Take the exhaust note, which is piped into the cabin through the speakers, which, after about 5,000 RPM, start to resonate very unpleasantly, like really, really badly. Or the weird system that pings you every time it sees an S-Bend up coming to ask if you want to go into N-Mode, even if you're driving through a small village. And then there's... Oh, that's it. You see, when I first drove the R20N, I'll be honest, I was a little bit disappointed. Perhaps it was the fact that it was so hyped up. Perhaps my expectations were too high. Perhaps I was just a bit reactionary. But the engine didn't feel like it picked up as well as it should have done. The turning didn't feel perhaps quite as sharp as I wanted. Maybe the existence of the ST or the i30 sort of had spoiled me maybe. But it took me an entire day to realise just how wrong I was. If the Fiesta ST is the class SWAT at the front, always with its hands up for every question, then this is the class clown. It's the one at the back tossing paper around, making jokes that even the teacher can't help but laugh at. It is just so silly. Everything about this car is a bit daft. That pointless little rear wing. You just have to look at it to know that it's doing absolutely nothing. It just looks so aggressive. Oh, there's other things like the fact that just here, there's a little bit of blue trim that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But this whole car is just an utterly, utterly joyous piece of machinery. Oh, and particular joy must be taken from the animation when you switch to N mode, which looks like something from the Lord of the Rings for absolutely no reason. And all that, everything we've spoken about, that's what a hot hat should be. It should make you have a stupid grin that looks like you're going slightly mad or emit noises that you've never heard before and hope you'll never hear again. It's not about metrics or analyzing times. It's not about setting new lap times. It's not even about straight line performance. It should be just about reaching the end of your drive and wishing you could go and do it all over again as soon as is humanly possible. And we've just heard that the Fiesta ST is going to die next year. It'll be no more. What we can say is, thankfully, its successor is here already. And you know what? With that, I could finally sleep sound.